Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be giving you guys the full list of all the players that the Washington Commanders will have top 30 draft visits with. There's over 10 new players from yesterday that were added to the list. So we're going to break it down, talk about these players and what does this top 30 visit actually mean. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. I'm on the road to 7,500 subscribers. So please help me get there. Also hit that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video and follow my Twitter trying to get to a thousand followers on there. Now, let's get right into the video. So the Washington Commanders are expected to meet with a ton of players over the next few days in their top 30 visits. So we're going to break that all down, starting off with what is a top 30 visit. So each team gets to visit with 30 players, and if they do a visit with them, that is considered a top 30 visit. It's different than a combine meeting or anything over Zoom because these players are actually going to the team's facilities. There are some exceptions with some local prospects where it doesn't count towards a top 30 visit. But what does a top th uh, 30 visit really mean? It could be one of four things according to Albert Breer, basically meaning it could mean anything, but he says team has genuine interest, team wants other teams to think there's interest there's an off-field issue to address with the player. There's a loose end injury-wise for the team to tie up. I think for the most part, it means that the team does have genuine interest in the player because they only have 30 visits. I really don't think there's too much of you know teams wanting other teams to think there's interest because, again, they only have 30 of these visits, so they want to make the most of them, and they do if there's a guy like, let's say, they met with John Mechie or they're meeting with him. He towards ACL this past year. They want to see if that's all good, and I think that's more why they use the top 30 visits for injured players and guys that they want to know more about, you know, guys that they are interested in. So let's go ahead and start with some of the guys that they are expected to meet with. So Jaquan Brisker is meeting with the commanders tomorrow and Friday. So for two days, Thursday and Friday, he's a, you know, Safety from Penn State. You guys can, I'll show you guys a quick scouting report on him. Not going to do it for all these players, but I think he's going to be a second round pick. So I think he might be there at 47, and he would be a pretty good fit for the Washington Commanders. Could play that safety position, free safety position if you want. He's very versatile. Six foot one, 200 pounds, ran a 449 40 yard dash, 22 on the bench press. 35 inch vertical so pretty pretty good right there you guys can read some of the other things his NFL comparison is Justin Reed good you know NFL safety size with huge hands so and yes he was let's see uh, played through pain for most, most of the 2021 season so he's a guy likely going to be in the second round but definitely at a position in need and allows you know Washington to be a little bit more flexible there. They can play Cam Curl a little bit more as a big nickel, or maybe even, you know, they could have uh, Jaquan Brisker as a big nickel, Buffalo nickel as well, because they are looking to fill that need. But this would not be a bad pick in the second round, let's say if Washington goes receiver in the first round. But again, if they do get Jaquan Brisker in the second, then they're going to still have a big need for linebacker unless they fill that up before the draft. So some other guys that Washington is meeting with, we've known Chris Olave for a while, but they're meeting with San Diego State, D. Lyman, Cam Thomas, and Michigan State running back Kenneth Walker III on Friday. So let's start off real quick with a quick background on Cameron Thomas because I haven't really heard about him that much. Just a couple times, you know, in some mock drafts, but he is a defensive end out of San Diego State, about six foot five, two hundred and seventy pounds. You look at his stats this past season. Uh, 71 total tackles, 11 and a half sacks, and one forced fumble. So not really sure where he's going to go. Seems like a mid-round, like second to fourth round guy. Not completely sure. So might be, a, again, not completely sure. Might be a little bit too early for Washington. But if it's something like the third or fourth round, they could definitely use another defensive lineman. Again, though, third round, second round seems a little bit too early. But 
you never know. And they're going to, of course, meet with other defensive linemen as well to get a better sense of these guys. And I wouldn't mind if they drafted either an interior or an edge rusher in that fourth round range if there's a guy that, you know, is pretty high up on their board because they definitely need some depth there. But I think there's still some really good veteran defensive linemen that I would prefer them go after versus drafting someone pretty high up there. That Those are just my thoughts, though. Uh, some other guys that they are meeting with. Oh, oh, and real quick, Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker is going to be drafted pretty high, I think, in the second or third round. He's probably the top running back in this class. I mean, he was just a beast for Michigan State this past year, really carried their, their offense this year. And, I mean, he's going to be a really good running back. I just don't think... There's value there in that second to third round for running back when you already have a solid running back core with Gibson, McKissick, and even Patterson. I, again, I've been you know talking about this for a while, would rather draft a guy in the sixth, seventh round if we do get back another sixth round pick just because I think that there's more value there. You look at the last few years, a lot of the better running backs have been drafted in the, you know, seventh round or, you know, fifth to seventh round, like Elijah Mitchell last year, James Robinson the year before. You can, Of course, there's still good running backs drafted in the first round, like Najee Harris last year, but I think there's better value in the later rounds, and you can get some really good players at other positions in the second to third round, and that's what I would rather do. Okay, so other players that Washington has met with, uh, Ohio State Chris Ola uh, receiver Chris Olave, John Mechie, we talked about that the last couple of days, but some new guys, this is from Ben Stanek, Penn State offensive tackle Rashid Walker, uh, Utah, St I I'm sorry, I don't know what college that is, not good with abbreviations, offensive guard Spencer Burford, Washington State offensive tackle Abe Lucas, Central Michigan offensive tackle Luke Godkey. Uh, so a lot of offensive linemen, a little bit surprising there. Rashid Walker, three tackles and one offensive guard. Guard is definitely a position that they could still add in free agency and the draft. Not only has some depth, but you could always upgrade. Like I think you, Andrew Norwell is pretty solid. It's going to be hard to upgrade that right away. But West Schweitzer, you can definitely upgrade that in the next year or so. So adding someone in that middle of, you know, in, if they get a third round pick, if they do trade back or in the fourth round, wouldn't be a bad idea to add some depth and some upside there as a backup who could eventually be a starting guard in this league. Because again, it's another position <clears throat> where there's a lot of good value in those in that middle of the draft in the third to fifth round range, some great value. And I don't know much about these other offensive tackles, but I would assume some of those guys can play guard as well because I don't think tackle is a huge position to need. I think they could add some depth there, but I think we're pretty set with the starters in you know, Charles Leno, who's, you know, going to be here for the next few years or is under contract for the next few years. And Sam Cosme, who was a beast for us this past year, just was injured a ton, but they did re-sign Cornelius Lucas. So I think adding another tackle would be okay, but not much more than that. And I wouldn't want to do it early. That's just me though, but they're meeting with a lot of offensive linemen. So that is definitely interesting for sure. And they're also meeting with safety Daxton Hill. And I'll read this right here from John Comics. Uh, Visits clearly mean interest, but in some case, they already have what they need from the player from uh, prior meetings and don't need to have them visit some cases of what if scenario trade back, uh, etc. So I love Daxton Hill. The thing is with him, I think it's too early at 11 to draft him. And also at 47, he's likely not going to be there. So if you do trade back into the like 20s or something, that is a spot where I definitely wouldn't mind drafting someone like Daxon Hill who can play free safety, can probably play that Buffalo nickel as well. You look at his kind of stats, about six foot, 192 pounds. And uh, sorry, let me stop that right there. This past year had about 70 tackles, half a sack, two interceptions, but was playing with an injured shoulder. So if you do want to watch some tape, watch it from 2020, because that's when he was kind of fully healthy. And he kind of had to let up on some of these tackles this year because of his injured shoulder. But he's kind of a do-it-all, really confident guy, super athletic. And I think he would be a good pick in the late first round early second it's just that he's not going to be there very likely 
very likely not going to be there at 47. So if we did either trade back in the first or trade up in the second, he would probably be there, maybe be there in the top five picks of the second round. But he's definitely a guy that would help because I still think safety is a position in need. And, you know, there's a lot of versatility there. Like, let's say they draft someone like Kyle Hamilton at 11. He could be your free safety, but a lot of people think he probably he can play free safety but he's not best suited for there so he could play free safety at some points but also play that buffalo nickel sometimes line up as a linebacker like he's everything we wanted landing collins to be and a little bit more in terms of his versatility he is going to be a true weapon like he could play strong safety for some plays and have camera curl drop down a big nickel so there's a lot of things you could do adding a safety like Daxton Hill, Kyle Hamilton, Jaquan Brisker for sure. And another player that they met with is Jalen Widermeyer, tight end out of Texas A&M. You know, he was really high up there on some boards, you know, a couple months ago, but he's starting to dip down. But a tight end's another position where there's a few of these positions where I would not mind them adding in these middle rounds, like tight end, offensive guard, either you know d end or interior defensive line for sure uh yeah i think those are definitely positions that they could address in the middle of the draft and you know cornerback as well so this is the list right here of the top 30 visits for the washington commanders i'll read it one more time i'll read it one time all the way through chris olave john mechie rashida walker spencer burford abe lucas Luke Godkey, Jaquan Brisker, Kenneth Walker III, Cam Thomas, Daxon Hill, and Jalen Weidermeyer. And just because there's a player that you love, like let's say Garrett Wilson or Kyle Hamilton, is not on the list, doesn't mean they aren't interested in him. It just could be that they already know what they need to know about that player. Like John Kimes said, they know they would take him at 11. They either think he's not going to be there at 11, or they just don't see the upside of meeting with him when they already love him and they don't really need to know more than that when there's other players that they're still having questions about maybe in the middle you know second to third round so i think it is a good approach but there's going to be more and more leaks about who they're meeting with so i will give you guys updates on that i think ed oliver put out a video as well today talking about some i think isaiah spiller running back who they're i looked it up i don't think it's official meeting, but they're very interested in him. Maybe it'll come out that it is an official top 30 meeting, but I couldn't, you know, get that right for sure. So I didn't want to put it in here, but yeah, that is it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think about these top 30 visits. Any players that I listed that you're really interested in, I really like Daxon Hill, Jaquan Brisker, Kenneth Walker is really, really intriguing to me, but I just don't like the value there. And Chris Olave for sure, I love him. Just 11 is a little too rich for me. I put out a poll on my community post about you know which guys you guys would take at 11 and a lot of people took Chris Olave over Garrett Wilson. I think he's climbing up people's boards just because Washington is showing interest in him, interest in him and I think a lot of people are sleeping on Garrett Wilson. So that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Peace guys.